I'm going to talk about interventional oncology, which is the new discipline in the field of cancer care. It aspires to join surgery, uh, radiation oncology, and medical oncology as the fourth pillar in the treatment of cancer. Interventional oncology uses uh, minimally invasive image-guided methods to deal with cancer, and we mainly focus on the local destruction of tumors. It works well, and it has the advantage that you don't need to open the patient up. You can actually destroy the tumor uh, and then leave it there to be absorbed by the body. Um, that has obvious ab advantages, including quicker recovery of the patient, fewer complications, and the oncological results are excellent. Using a variety of forms of energy, for example, radiofrequency waves work in a very similar way to microwaves. What you do is you give local anesthetic and sedation and introduce an electrode into the tumor that's going to be destroyed, for example, in the liver or the kidney. You confirm the position uh, using CT scanning and show that the electrode is in the correct position inside the tumor. And once you're satisfied that you are where you need to be, you then pass electricity through the electrode, and that allows radiofrequency waves to emerge from the electrode and cook the tumor. So that's what it is. It actually is cooking of the tumor uh, and uh, destruction of it without the need to take it out. By making sure that your electrode is in exactly the right place, you have to be millimeter accurate uh, and you have to confirm the position of the electrode by checking using CT images that you're not um, too close to something that needs uh, to avoid being heated too much in order, not, in order not to damage it. You can use cryotherapy, which is freezing the tumor, uh, and in certain circumstances that's better. And there are other different forms of energy uh, that are coming on stream now, newer ones, for example, irreversible electroporation, so-called. That's a non-thermal fo form of destruction. Instead of heating the tumor, you punch holes uh, in the cell membrane, and that stops the cell from being able to regulate itself. It destroys homeostasis, and the cell dies because it can no longer uh, regulate its, uh, its functions. Um, that's very useful in sensitive areas where you're close to vital organs uh, because you're not using heat, and therefore you can be particularly accurate. But everything has advantages and disadvantages, and you choose the method that's most suitable for a particular patient. No, um, um, some, some aspects of it are new, like irreversible electroporation, and uh, that is really, for practical purposes, experimental. But other methods, such as radiofrequency ablation and microwave ablation, have been around for quite a while. And for small tumors, they're tried and tested and have been shown to work very well, and they're cheaper than surgical alternatives. So, for example, when you're destroying uh, small tumors in the kidney, uh, the three main methods of treatment are either to take the kidney out, nephrectomy, total nephrectomy, partial nephrectomy, take part of the kidney out, or using a form of ablation. It has actually been shown in studies that it is a very cost-effective, uh, that ablation is a very cost-effective way of dealing with these tumors. I think interventional oncology should be considered a discipline that works side by side with the other disciplines that I mentioned, medical oncology, radi uh, radiotherapy, and surgical oncology. And particularly, it's very close to radiation oncology, to radiotherapy. They're both dealing with the local treatment of tumors. They both use imaging guidance, and there's an overlap between them. They are sister disciplines. And I think collaboration between them, clinical collaboration and academic collaboration, would be very, very beneficial. Also, it has been shown to work very well in synergy with uh, certain forms of drug administration. So, for example, if you're destroying a tumor with radiofrequency, if you inject that particular patient with a chemotherapeutic agent such as doxorubicin, you may achieve a larger area of destruction. So there's a lot of potential there for collaboration between these disciplines, and it's, it's, they shouldn't be seen as competitive um, they should be seen as, as collaborative more than anything else.